So good morning, good morning, good morning. Exit Strategies Radio Show family. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to this spectacular episode of Exit Strategies Radio Show. Hey, I'm your host, Colin J. Millett, Broken on the Exit Realty Locals Group in beautiful North Charleston, South Carolina. You know I like to get the animation in there with y'all today. <laughs> hey, guys, look, we are very, very honored. You know, we always work to have the latest, the greatest, and the best. And look here, we ain't necessarily got the latest, but we sure enough got the greatest and the best with oh. us today. And that is none other than Shakima Chapman with the Chapman Group with Keller Williams Realty. How are you doing today, Shakima? I am fantastic. And I love that you plugged North Charleston. You know, I'm a product of North Charleston. North Charleston always gets a bad rap. So, but some look great here. things come out of North Charleston. But look here, we try to do a little, little something, like an old folks say, a little TT, a little song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being with us today. So for our listeners, guys, if you don't know Shakima, y'all need to know her. And today y'all are going to find out why. So I'm going to drop like one or two things here. And then we're going to run with this thing today. If you're all right with that, ma'am, you are the author, the author of a book. I, I love this. I love the, the, the name, the title, but you're the author of Possess the Land. Am I right? Correct. All right. <laughs> Co-author. And I say co-author because God definitely wrote that book. <laughs> hold, 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 hold on. See, that's where, that's where I was going. So <laughs> you are rooted and grounded in faith. You, in turn, do not hide that. And I really appreciate that. That's something that mm -hmm. sometimes is missing from my industry, from commerce as a whole. So mm -hmm. I want to plug right there. You're the co-author mm -hmm. of Possess the Land. So, Shakim, if you don't mind, tell listeners a little bit about the book, about the story that you share. But let's take a journey. So let's okay. talk about real estate and, and why you're here and what it is that you do. OK, so in regard to the book, what I when I came in and I started working and you, of course, Corin can attest, you know, a lot of times in the communities that we work and serve, people don't always come ready and prepared. Mm -hmm. to buy a home. And so the vision that God gave me was he took the story that the children of Israel in their journey and how they faced giants. God had given them a promise that he had given them land, but it was required of them to go out and take the action to actually acquire it. But when they got and they actually saw the land, they ran into giants. And so the vision that God gave me was Think about the clients that you work with. What are their giants? And a lot of times those giants are credit, it's debt, it's down payment. And so what the book does is takes a look at home ownership and parallels it um, with the story that the children of Israel took from their journey and their escape from Egypt to their particular promised land. Because it's my belief, Deuteronomy 1 and 8 clearly states it, that God has given us all the ability to own. And so the scripture clearly says, look, I've given it, given it to you, but you must go in and possess it. Now, hold on. We're going to get the plate here in a minute. Because <laughs> so the basis for, you know, our show, you know, exit strategies, exit, I, I tell people is an action word. And mm -hmm. I don't want to talk too much about that. I really want to bring it to mm -hmm. you, but it's based upon Exodus. It's based upon the book of Exodus when mm -hmm. the people had the journey. Because we got to move people. That's what we do in this yeah. industry. We move people. But see, you're there. See, you're past the movement. You're to the possession. I'm moving you. God moves people so that they can possess. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. Look here. That's that's and a the word. Thing that about is. it, what that what that scripture did to me, because you know, you. I mean, we all know the story. If you went to Sunday school, it was like one story. <laughs> but one thing I love about the Bible is that when you read it, sometimes you get different revelation. And so that re huge revelation for me was. Because at, in Deuteronomy 1 and 8, what God was doing was reminding them. He had already told them. And so he was just basically saying, look, I've given it to you, but hey, you got to do your part. And I think that's the part that sometimes we miss being faith-based. Yes, we can pray, but when we get off our knees, we need to do some work. Oh, that, hold on. Say that one more time because our listeners need to hear yeah, that. We can pray, but when we get up off our knees, we need to be hearing so we can do the work. And and that's the that's the part that people mm -hmm. miss. People want to get on their knees, but they don't want to do any work. You know, mm -hmm. that, grant, there's an action that takes place on your knees. When you get up, that's when your faith goes into action. Exactly. The faith that you had in praying to God and saying, hey, mm -hmm. God, will you please? I need, I want, 
Will you please deliver this to me? Or will you please help me with this? When we stand up off our knees, God has called, called us and charged us with moving forward in the action with the belief that mm -hmm. whatever it is that we ask, that he is going to deliver. So mm -hmm. that's home ownership. That's whatever. However, in that movement, it ain't just go move into the house. It is, hey, you need to do these things you right need here. To do some stuff. You need to do some stuff. Right. And then, the, you know, the other revelation that God gave me that a lot of people don't like to hear is the very first thing that Moses did when they escaped Egypt is he sat them down around the mount, the mountain of Sinai and he gave them rules. He gave them boundaries. And so in the book, we equate that to some of the boundaries that you have to establish when buying a house. You may have to create a budget. You may have to sacrifice some things. You may have to work on your credit. You may have to work on your debt. But there are some boundaries that you are going to have to, you know, adhere to because God's not going to bless your mess. You know, the goal is not to just get you into the house. The goal is to make sure that it the, the blessing doesn't become a curse. In other words, it's something that you can financially sustain. And a lot of times and I know Cora and I'm pre preaching to the choir. People don't want to hear that. They want the fast, easy and, and you know, I you know I don't mind cracking a joke. They want the program, whatever the program is to get them. <laughs> they want a program. They don't want to save money. They don't want to work on credit. They don't want to do all those things. But in order, and I've seen people, you know, bypass me fast track because they want the fast track. And a few years later, they find themselves in a financial hardship because they did not discipline themselves to be prepared to buy a home. See, homeownership is a frame of mind. Yes. You know, it, it, it's a mindset and people want to bring the same old mindset. Mm, that's, that's a word. Right that's, that's a good. word. Hold on. See, got me scratching my head. That's a word right there. Because see, we that's the new wine and old wine. <laughs> mm, there you go. That's Listen, a word I'm a right good Baptist there. girl too. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they want to do that. They want to bring the same old things they've been doing. Going mm. out, clubbing, whatever it is, partying. You know, the mismanagement of, of their money, you know, the lack of budgeting, the lack of mm -hmm. saving. They want to bring all those things into home ownership, and that stuff doesn't fit. Right. And then they have a struggle and have a problem. Now, Jakima, what got you into? And we kind of bypassed that because I'm excited mm -hmm. to talk about what it is that you do and your commitment to mm -hmm. our community. You know, you and I have had some conversations. We've talked mm -hmm. a lot over the years about this and about that. But what got you into real estate and what drives your passion? to serve people in the manner that you do? Well, well, for one, since I believe we all have destinies, some of us are pushed and some of us leap into our destiny. I unfortunately was pushed <laughs> because I had a great corporate job that I knew on the 1st and the 15th, I was going to get paid without a doubt. But that job, the season for me in that job shifted and the job that I love started to become more of a pain point. And I tried to find every answer of what I wanted to do other than what I know God told me to do, which was go into real estate. And so it got to the point where I found myself sitting on a doctor's table being prescribed depression medication. It was it just got that bad. And so I said, God, I need to you've been pushing me. You've been you know, you've told me to leap. Now I'm being pushed. So that's what got me to make that faith walk. But what really propelled me and gave me a passion even to buy a home of my own, if you have a conversation with me more than 10 minutes, I'll, you'll probably hear some, me quoting something from my grandmother. And I love my grandmother dearly. And my grandmother's house was the place where on every holiday, everyone gathered and barbecues. Now, mind you, Corwin, my grandmother's house was two bedrooms, 800 square feet. But somehow we all figured it out. Yep, you know, yep, my mom yep. had me as a teenager. So I, I was born in a house. It was me, cousins. And then we would invite people over. Right. So to me, her home was family. Mm -hmm. But what I did not know was that she had rented this house. Right. For over 30 something years, my grandmother rented this house and then her landlord died. And, you know, her and her landlord made an agreement 30 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. So her rent was almost nothing. Mm -hmm. But when the landlord died and the children came and took over the property, they increased the rent to a point where it was no longer affordable. Mm -hmm. And so that instilled in me. I didn't want that for my family. Because mm -hmm. what we lost was all of the memories that we had in, my, in that home. 
Now, mind you, over 30 years, she paid for the house, right? Mm -hmm. But because she did not own it and she did not have the stability of her own housing, we lost all those memories. And I still have a dream. I keep in touch with the owner. I am going to buy that house back one day. That is my ultimate dream Mm -hmm. to buy that house back one day. You know, you you touched on things. So thank you so much for opening Mm -hmm. and sharing. Because, see, I grew up similar. So I grew up with my great grandparents. Mm-hmm. And small house, eight, nine hundred square feet. But we all um, packed it in, didn't even know it. <laughs> exactly. Everybody coming up, the, look at it. The house seemed massive. And, <laughs> what, you know, at the time to us, you know, as it does now, that situation, my, my grandparents didn't own their home. But later, you know, grandfather passed, grandmother took out a mortgage on it, um, a second, and, you know, just things kind of went haywire. I was a kid not Mm -hmm. around and just didn't really Mm -hmm. understand what was going on. Now that home is owned by someone else. And in turn, I'm like, you know what, when I'm gonna buy this home back one day, Mm -hmm. um, because that's where my childhood, where Mm -hmm. the values and things that I, that I carry were instilled in me in Mm -hmm. in that setting. So, I mean, I get it and we get it. That's why you do the work that you do in the community. That that is- To keep, to maintain and to keep that legacy, you know? I mean, I still see the tree in the front yard that we we, we played in and we call the love boat. They, they're not going to know. All these young <laughs> folks are not going to remember what the love boat was. But it's just, you know, not only is home ownership a wealth building tool, but it's also a le- legacy building tool. And to have lost that legacy is always. But I, I still believe with all everything within me that one day I'm going to buy that house back. So you touched on something else that in today's time that we probably should be reminded of. Often, you know, everybody focuses, well, I say everybody, so many times the conversation is exclusive to real estate is just wealth building. Mm-hmm. You know, we forget that families are stabilized by ownership. Mm-hmm. You know, and that component, that conversation seems to lack because everybody just focused on the money. Now, mm-hmm. granted, the big picture, the long term, yes, real estate is a wealth building, mm-hmm. but there is wealth created in legacy. Because it's a and stability, and even think about now what you're seeing now. I'm sure you're getting the same calls of folks. You know, I've lived in this house six, ten years, and now my landlord wants to sell it, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "You, yeah, you could still buy, but it's not going to happen overnight. This has been should have been something you've been preparing for five years ago when you got mm-hmm. into that rental." So mm-hmm. I, you know, that's my big message is when you own, you have more control over the stability in your houses. When you're renting someone else's house, number one, you're paying a mortgage. You're just paying someone else's mortgage anyway, but they are within their rights to sell that property at any time. And then what does that do to you in the stability of you and your family? That's huge. So look, we're going to pop a quick break in here. But before okay. we do that, Share your contact information with our listeners. How can people get in contact with you? So the best way to reach me and the team is on our website, the Chapman Group SC.com. And then you can also reach us at 843-800-8285. Awesome. Awesome. So <laughs> listeners, guys, y'all hold tight. As I always say, y'all flip that flapjack and we're going to be right back because we're going to continue a conversation with Mr. Kima Chapman with the Chapman Group with Keller Williams. Realty. Guys, we'll be right back. Congratulations to Exit Realty Low Country Group's Realtor of the Week, none other than Kashana Wine. You can reach Kashana by dialing 843-818-3591 or text Amazing Homes. That's Amazing Homes, A-M-A-Z-I-N-G-H-O-M-E-S to 853 853- Seven seven, y'all give Kishana a holler now. And we're back, guys. Second segment, Exit Strategy Radio Show. Hey, y'all know who I am. So look, we're gonna jump right back in because we're having a great conversation today with Shakima Chapman, the owner, team leader, Chapman, the Chapman Group. I'm sorry, at a Keller Williams Realty with Keller Williams Realty. So guys, look, Shakima is is it? I always talk about latest, greatest, and best. And again, we've, we've determined she's been around for a while, so we can't call her the latest, but we've mm-hmm. shown up to call her the, the greatest and the best because she cares and, and is concerned about our community and most importantly about what it is that we do in this industry. She's the author of a book, Possess the Land, 
Um, so Shakima, again, thank you so much for being with us today. Before the break, you know, we were obviously talking about what drives you, your passion, what got you, you know, engaged, involved in real estate. We did touch on Possess the Land. So where can people get that book? Let's make sure we get that information out. Yeah, list. they can actually find it on Amazon. And then, of course, when we do vendor events, we will have books with us. But the best way to get it is on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So listeners, guys, y'all order that book. Y'all go on Amazon. Hold on. You know, hold on. I, look, I don't, I don't think I've reached the status <laughs> yet with um Steve Harvey where I can say, look, go do this. We're going to shut the website down. <laughs> but, but, but it'll uh, be here. nice. Uh, hold on. We we got vision, so we going. But I want you guys right now, I want you to open your app if you're on your phone and your car. Well, hold on. If you're driving, don't open up with nothing. Mm-hmm. But if you're not driving, I want you to open open the app or on your computer, get to the, your browser, go to Amazon, plug in Possess the Land. Make sure you look for Shakima Chapman. Mm-hmm. That's the author. She's the author. Please make sure you all got the right book. And I want you to go ahead and download it or, or order it now. You need this information. And guys. what I love about, again, the book and how we co-authored it, because I'm telling you, this was a God thing, is I'm a huge believer in action. I always say information will inspire you, but it's the action you take that will transform your life. So after every chapter of the book, there are actual action steps, both practical and spiritual to help you prepare to go through this process. Because what I find for some people, it truly is a spiritual battle. And so sometimes they have to overcome, maybe sometimes it's the limiting beliefs or the things that they've heard. Maybe no one in their family has ever bought a home or sometimes it's just big spiritual attacks against their life that they have to actually fight against. And we give you practical tools as well as spiritual tools to go through that battle. You know, you strike me as this person and I I look and if I if I catch you off guard, I apologize. But I'm pretty sure I won't. You strike me as a person because I used to be this person. Pray with your clients, yeah. you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and cause you pray over them, mm-hmm. but you know, I used to, in, in quote unquote, my younger years, um, before all this gray and stuff set in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it sneak up on you so fast. Yeah, 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 hold on. It, it was, look here, it wasn't a sneak. It just kind of came and said, okay, let's go. <laughs> Damn. But you know, in that process, you know, cause you're trying to help them again, like you said, overcome, those quote unquote strongholds that exist in their life, the things that they do, you know, me and my wife talk about this stuff all the time. Those things that, you know, you quote unquote, you picked up from the parents that, Mm -hmm. you know, aren't conducive to the life that you're, you're setting out to do. And you're trying Mm -hmm. to overcome the things. And and it's not necessarily what they taught you, but it's just what you saw them do that Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't line up with what you need to be doing now in order to be able to achieve home ownership or whatever it is. So those things are the things that we're talking about for our listeners. Guys, those are the things that we're talking about. We ain't trying to change, with quote unquote, we ain't trying to change you. We're trying to change your life. So in order for you to achieve home ownership, that is a life changing event for someone who had no idea what to do or if they would ever achieve it. But they had a belief that they would. They have faith in order to take the action, the steps necessary. Because faith is is not just a hope and a wish. It is an action word. It It is an action. It requires requires action. It requires action. And even if you look at examples in in the Bible, David had to go out with the rock. He he couldn't just stand back and and, the giant couldn't fall. Even with the children of Israel, they had to physically walk around the walls of Jericho. They had to go to battle. They actually went into battle in order to be able to possess something that God had already promised them and given them. You know, I just, funny you should talk about the walls of Jericho. I actually just said that around my office other day. I said, some of y'all been working, walk, walk six times and y'all stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to keep on walking consistency. Cause I, and I hate to say it, and I'm trying to do better and not be critical, but I think it's a different generation. I think a lot of people are in that microwave generation where they're used to things happen instantly and some things require persistence. I mean, if real estate didn't teach me anything else, because you know my testimony, I got into this game on pushed and on faith and then didn't sell a thing for nine months. You remember the days when property just hung around and all that good stuff? So it was the persistence. But I look back now, what, have, what would have happened if I had quit in month seven, month mm-hmm. two, month mm-hmm. one? How mm-hmm. different my life would have been. So uh, my first close, when I got into the business, 
I got licensed. So matter of fact, in a, in a few weeks is 18 is Mark. So 18 wow. years is Mark. And then we go going towards 19 mm-hmm. and I didn't close my first transaction until January. So from mm-hmm. May to January, you know what I'm saying? But I'm still mm-hmm. putting in work. I'm learning. Right. I'm, you know, I'm doing everything that I think I possibly can do to be positioned to make it happen. And mm-hmm. that exactly what that is. There was there was a belief that was greater than my fear. Mm-hmm. The faith was greater. That's the thing, like you said, this and not, you know, hey, if you in the microwave generation, guys, we're gonna ask you to turn the countdown off. Because yeah. it doesn't, you know, real success, true wealth is built consistently, persistently, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, over a period of time. It's not instantaneous. You can make some money quick, but creating and growing wealth takes time. Hmm. And and that's the thing that a lot of people are, are missing. So in this particular climate, let's touch on this. I always, every, you know, every time we get the honor of having someone, you know, that's in the streets and, and really engaged and to be blunt about it, knows the industry and knows what it takes to, you know, help people. We always ask them, well, what are you telling people during this time? What, how are you advising them during this time in order for them to achieve home ownership? And, and we, we're not just local here. So, you know, in, in that response, we are global. We have people to listen to us all over the country and all over the world. So what are you telling people in order for them to be successful at accomplishing home ownership or even selling a home in this market? Definitely persistence and getting their financial house in order. You know, gone are the days where you kind of go in and knowing for sure a seller is going to pay your closing costs. So really having real strong conversations about getting, making sure you have your down payment money, but also making sure you have your, your closing costs. Also, and this is a term I use in my book, I call it eating the manna. So if, again, if you think about the story, God gave the children of man, the children of Israel manna to feed them, but they weren't satisfied with the manna because they were used to eating the riches and the meats of Egypt. God was feeding them. Literally, you walk out your door and food is there. And they were unhappy with that. And so when I tell people eat the manna, I mean, be happy with what God provides you. In other words, if you find a great house, great location, and the right number of bedrooms that you need, if it doesn't have granite countertops, don't walk away from that house. Countertops can be changed. Paint can be updated. So just being really grateful for what God has provided for you and don't get caught up in all the flash of what people think owning a home is, because this may just be your starter. I mean, I know you're seeing it now. I have clients who are buying houses last year, two years, three years ago, are walking away with six figure checks and able to now invest into their dream home, but had they walked away from those starter homes, turned turned their nose away from those starter homes, they would not have been able to do that. And so I like to always tell people the fastest way to your dream home is to just start somewhere and invest. So that is the biggest thing that I'm telling people, be persistent, make sure your financial house is in order, and then also be willing to start. Just be willing to, you know, you don't have to get the five bedrooms, granite countertops, wood floors, and a pool in the backyard the first time out, but just be able to to be willing to invest in real estate. Well, you know, we always could, you know, you want a pool that bad, I'll bring a shovel over and we'll see. (laughs) (laughs) And plus the insurance on the maintenance on the pools. I don't think people realize what they did, what they're asking for. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Look, because we don't, think beyond we don't think the work that goes into it making sure that thing is clean and running and all that kind of stuff so shakima look give your contact information out again for our listeners so how how can people Mm -hmm. reach you so again our website is the easiest way the chapman group sc which stands for south carolina the chapman group sc.com or 843-800-8285 awesome awesome so our listeners guys look we we are having a blast here and we're going to go on just a a tidbit longer, but we want to make sure that you all know where to reach Shakima, her team, so you guys can get the assistance and the help that you need on this home ownership journey. She's an author of Possess the Land. Look, it is a biblical roadmap to home ownership. So hold on, matter of fact, I said that wrong. Co-author, I'm sorry, Co-author. I got it right. <laughs> Co-author of Possess the Land. It is literally a, a roadmap using scripture to walk you through the process of possessing a land. 
owning your own home, your own property. So again, Shakima, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. So before we go, Shakima, what do you want our listeners to know? What message do you have to share with them? Um, just remain faithful. I know, like we like since COVID, we have had some rough. <laughs> some rough times. And, you know, it seems like every month, every, you know, something else is popping off and just really remaining faithful, especially if they want to achieve home ownership. And it doesn't have to be me or, or Corwin, but really invest in a quality real estate agent. I know your mama bought a house in 1980. And I know your friend even bought a house last year. But this market is changing so quickly that you can't even rely on the experience that your um, friend had. I always share the story. When I bought my house in 2008, it was like right before the market crash. I got $16,000 in closing costs and all this stuff. If that was my only experience with you know people buying a home, how horrible would my advice be right now to someone who's in the market? Say, mm-hmm. don't listen to Corwin. Hey, I got sixteen thousand dollars to buy my house. Mm-hmm. You think you're getting sixteen dollars in this market? I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. So, mm-hmm. my greatest advice is trust the professional you hire. I got fired yesterday because I couldn't find someone a hundred and fifty thousand dollar condo near the beach. Mm-hmm. Someone else said they could. I told them go forth and be great. If you can <laughs> find it. You are there, absolutely right. I am not the right agent for them. But just really, when you hire your agent, put trust. We are, we have your best interests at heart, right? And we're not, we're guiding you based on what is happening in real time. So yeah. you really, and as much as your mama loves you, and as great as her advice is about how, how to cook the cornbread, this may not be her arena. Well, look at <laughs> look at it. Yeah, even if your mama gave you, the recipe for Nigel's cornbread um, <laughs> is about real estate. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Again, Shakima, thank you so much for being a guest, part of the Exit Strategies Radio Show family. We appreciate mm-hmm. you. We love you. Most importantly, we pray for you because we know what you go through and most importantly, what you're doing. Um, as I always say, I always Can I get to... one little plug Please. before we go up. So I have to tell this story because he's not going to he's not going to tell it. I appreciate you. Corwin, when I came into the industry, kind of pushed me into some leadership roles. I don't know if you remember that conversation. I think I hung up on you. I'm like, (laughs) I just came out of corporate. I'm not doing this, but you persisted and you insisted. And I appreciate that about you in an industry where we can be viewed as competitors. You took the time to lift me up and I appreciate you for that. You're welcome. So mm-hmm. look here, now you're going to make me cry. And I'm looking, I ain't crying <laughs> for this beard and all. <laughs> but we appreciate you. I, you know, some of us get the opportunity to, to begin cutting a path that others will finish. Um, and that is my belief. That is my perception. I'm going to mm-hmm. cut as much as I can. I'm going to get out of the way so others can go and cut mm-hmm. further. And you are, you know, I, I used to have a logging truck back in the day. That's a form of life. But um, you are definitely a saw head in this industry and you're blazing, and cutting a trail um, through the forest that is real estate. Shakima, thank you so much for what you do. To our listeners, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As you know, we always say to you and we say it all out of love. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we're going to see you guys out there in the streets. <laughs>